Hello, I'm Abby Walsh. I work for Accenture Interactive. I lead the design team in the UK and Ireland. Um, and I was lucky enough to be the jury president for digital design this year. Okay. Uh, my first question, my first question is basically, um, why do you think the DNA D pencil is still so important? And what does it mean to you and the industry as a whole? I mean, the DNA D pencil is, it's still just held up as being the most prestigious, especially in the world of craft and design, which is the world that I know. Um, because it's just got such a heritage, I think, and the quality of the awards that have been given over the years, you know, people still talk about past awards today, you know, they kind of stay in the memory. So I think as a designer or even as um, somebody who works with designers, that it's, it's a kind of renowned um, award to get. I think it stands for quality. Um, and that's yeah. something that really came out in the jury. I mean, I do have done several, I've been really lucky. I've been involved in quite a few juries over the past few years. And I think the DNA D jury really just does that level of seriousness about the quality. Yeah. Um, and I think that lends itself to the outcome, which is that, you know, you see it in the actual the quality of the awards that are given. So it's, it's prestige, it's quality, it's kind of aspirational. I think young designers coming up, you know, look to DNA D as something that they'd love to be part of. Uh, what do you think it takes to win both a DNA D pencil and then a black a DNA D black pencil? Yeah, I mean, having literally just hot off the hot off the judging today, I think it's yeah. still comes back to there's some simple principles around you know inspirational idea, originality of idea, and creativity. But I mean, particularly when it comes to the the category of digital design, you know, it's about how that is applied, and it's about how that is applied to get across, you know, complex or even really kind of um, important um, fundamental ideas, but in a, in a way that resonates and cuts through. And I think the black pens in particular, it's, it's that idea and it's cutting through in a way that no matter where you come from, whatever discipline, whatever background, it resonates. And I think that mm. takes a certain level of a combination of creativity and craft, but also ability to to work within the kind of multi um, faceted disciplines that we work with today and how those come together, basically. With your great experience in both digital design and also as a judge, what do you think makes for great inspirational work in digital design today in the 21st, you know, in 2020? Yeah, it's a big year for it. I mean, it couldn't be a bigger year for digital. Right. Um, so it was interesting when I started the um, the session um, last week with the jury, we did a bit of a round robin around what are people passionate about in this particular area. And it was good. I think there was a lot of stuff that re resonated with me around, you know, it's about um, impact, you know, it's about humanity, you know, this digital in particular is about connecting people and humans and never more so than now. I mean, digital is has accelerated in ways that people couldn't even imagine in the past two to three months, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a combination of things. I mean, it's obviously digital itself is a set of technologies, but really what it's come to stand for, I think, is connecting people and brands with people in, in really in ways that really resonate and that connect um, and have, yeah. have meaning. And obviously the, the flip side of that is the technology. So you know, also looking out for and interested in how technologies are evolving and how we as humans are evolving with technology. So I think it's those two things together that really stood out for the jury and for me in particular, I think. How about in your current role at Accenture? Um, how do you apply those, you know, those beliefs, those kind of uh, practices to your everyday work? I think, you know, what we stand for in Fjord resonates with the whole organisation, which is about, you know, putting people at the heart, putting design and designers into complex situations and really seeing an outcome that you wouldn't get if you didn't do that. So designers, I think, have such a, a particular way of seeing the world um, that really the result that you get through working with designers and, and connecting designers with other disciplines, I think, you know, the outcome you get is is more human and can be much more impactful and, and, and take things in a direction that isn't as, as expected, I think. So that those principles are really what's at the heart of what I do. Um, and really, you know, being part of Accenture just means we've got a bigger community to play with. So we're not just like a small niche, not that there's anything wrong with that, but we're not, we're not just designers, we are connecting with strategists and, you know, data analysts and, um, you know, mathematicians and all of these people, so we can bring design into lots of different disciplines. And that's really, I think, you know, that's 
what my day to day is all about really working with clients uh, okay. in in ways that are solving complexity but in new ways uh looking at the works that you judged this year what projects stood out in particular Ooh, i was i was going back through them which was uh which was interesting because as you go through, I mean, I'll talk a bit about the process, but obviously as you go through, the numbers are, are, are reducing, but I, was, I went back through a few of them. I think for me, um, there were a couple that really stood out um, and stood out interestingly for the jury, but in different ways. So there's one which was called Canvas for Spotify, which um, was particularly in the immersive um, experiences category. So really about, you know, a lot of the time these tend to be AR, VR, type experiences but this one was was actually more analog than that even though it was digital it was taking the idea of you know music into the physical space people are still really obsessed with what's the physical um, manifestation of digital um, and and this was a pop-up that was used i think it was at south by um to to connect art and um animation through records to give this kind of immersive experience inside a pop-up record store where you could also drink and eat and all of that so it was really truly immersive in terms of the five senses but uh, it was beautiful in the way that you know it was using um technology uh, new technology and old technology together basically so that was one that i really loved and a lot of the jury really loved um as well um i think another one that stood out for me and it was kind of more in a beta, at a beta level so you know it couldn't be as kind of expansive but this um credit card or this investment um service or product called do black which was basically about how you could measure your um your spending through your your carbon footprint but actually mm. have that kind of behavioral change aspect to it so you know, there's there's very there's really this kind of drive towards shared value. So if you're spending money and you're consuming, how is that going back into society or back into humanity? And this really took that idea and was properly, you know, this was a, a proper uh, financial service, but actually was putting kind of carbon emissions and carbon consumption at the heart of it, which I thought was brilliant. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, can you talk us through the DNA D judging process? Yep. Yes. I mean, and I'm lucky enough, this is the second time I've done it. The first time I was in the jury, this time I was jury president. So happily, I got to see somebody else be jury president so I could see what you have to do. Um, yeah. But essentially, you are, um, you're given a long list um, to start with. And this, this is the process that happens regardless of whether or not you can meet in person, which you then judge individually um, at home. So you get a, a list of, you know, however many um and that's sent through and it's all done by dna do have a really good voting system and you do that and you you peruse that and you look through and the case you know there's a case film usually there's a set of assets that that you can that you can use or you know if it's an app you can go and download the app and really you've got a period of a couple of weeks or several weeks to go through that material and judge that so you know that is creating the shortlist so through that after that initial kind of um remote if you like judging there's a, a short list that's created and then the jury come together um and obviously usually this is in person and this is the first time it wasn't um and then as a group collectively we then commit to a short list which is the first level of award that you can get and then you go through the pencils basically so from wood to basically to yellow but the way it would work is you don't know as a jury who has actually been selected for the yellow pencil? So that that isn't that isn't shared. So you go up through the the pencils, and then the black pencil is judged by the jury president at a separate date. So, say, so the process once you get together and you're going through the pencils and the shortlist, that's very much discussion, but you're uh -huh. still voting in secret, individually, basically. So would you say there's been much difference this year, considering the remote aspect? Yeah, I mean, it was quicker because, you know, I think, um, I mean, there's more break, I don't know, there's more natural breaks and things when you're in person. So we were quite, I think, generally speaking, we were quite focused. Um, I mean, I, you know, clearly I'd like to see the feedback, but I think we managed to get everybody talking equally and sharing their views. But I felt like our we got to consensus reasonably quickly throughout the process.
talking about you personally and your obviously your your day-to-day -day role how would you say the coronavirus pandemic has changed your creative process in any way yeah so i would say the first few weeks were just really getting used to to a new way of working so um you know normally we'd we'd be able to go into a room collectively get a few people together with a problem and start working things out on a whiteboard um, and then go off and, and do and do stuff individually or we might all be together you know collectively around a set of desks solving a problem together what I've found particularly for me because I'm you know less hands-on these days is that I've had to be much more hands-on again which has been really nice actually um, having to shape things and craft things myself because actually what you can't do easily is just you know you can't really sit around and wait you, you're kind of pushing things on all the time so I think you know, it probably means people are having to work harder. Whether they're more productive is another question. I think we're all just having to work harder, basically, because we're all having to do more individually and then come back together again. Do you change anything for good? Like in the future, do you see like this has made a lasting impact? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Actually, I think, you know, so those first few weeks, I think we're into a better phase now where um, I've had a couple of experiences that are the opposite of what I've just described, where actually we've come to a great creative outcome. Even though half of us are in North America, we've never met. And actually this is the first time we've met is on this particular piece of work that we're doing. And I think come up with some really great work. It took a really different approach. Like we just had to kind of trust each other to run with it and then come back together again and then pull it apart and not worry, not be precious about our own creative output and actually just allow it to almost be collided and, and broken up all the time. Um, so in short, short, shortened version, I think some things will, because I think we won't necessarily have to come together and we won't have to be physically together. I think actually what we've seen is overall productivity hasn't gone down. We've just worked out a way to answer the needs of our clients, but remotely basically. I just think people are working longer hours, which is not sustainable. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Going back yeah. to the awards, yeah. I'm just wondering what trends or themes did you see coming through this year in digital design? Obviously, everything is slightly skewed right now. So the trends would be, you know, um, that, that we would normally see probably it's such a moment in time. So I think the DNAD um, entries were extended. So actually some of the things that probably went in are even slightly more covid -y than others but i think what what i was expecting to see that i didn't see as much of i was surprised not to see what there weren't that many sort of um apps and products in in fs say. so i think maybe that's that might be uh a, a just because of the the timing and also i think it's sometimes quite hard to enter things like that because obviously in digital you know we're in the post uh, open banking era now there's a lot of amazing and very interesting startups in fs um and that i think is is just going to increase they're not necessarily going to all be challenger banks like monzo but you're seeing interesting things in insurance like fintech insurtech etc um so you know connecting or taking money out of the equation almost and just connecting people through exchanging of value and things like that um what i would say is that um learning will be absolutely one so learning was starting to be one anyway that we were seeing so online learning and using digital as a way to to um you know increase your skills in different areas clearly that is going to mass that is massively accelerating um, i think people have been amazed at how much they can continue to do and learn through di through digital tools and design obviously has a massive role to play in making that um, successful and ensuring that that has the impact that you want it to have. I don't think we can even start to imagine now actually the um, the impact that COVID had on the acceleration of digital. Um, what we're starting to see is that a lot of clients of ours and companies you know that you hear about talking about um, digitizing when you know in the past they would have taken years to do something it's now yeah. like they've managed to do it in two two months or whatever. Um, and that sort of kind of leads to such a huge uptake. So things like, you know, what we're seeing with tr track and trace and then whatever you think about that. Um, but just people actually being willing to use digital, like my parents who are really old, but just their adoption of digital has suddenly like gone through the roof, mm. which 
again, I think is going to lead to almost like a second renaissance of digital, which is the true digitization of everything, um, which I think will just be an absolutely fascinating time. But I mean, companies just need to get it right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you kind of touched upon this already, but obviously we're living in strange times. Yes. And, um, you know, thinking about Corona and everything else that's going on in the world right now, um, would you say there's been a shift in meaning regarding this, uh, regarding the category, the field of digital design? Um, I think there's a um, huge opportunity in, in how yeah. broad that has become. So, yeah, has there been a shift in meaning? I think if digital design is about designing the connection for humans it's also now designing the connection with humans to technologies and technologies to to physical and all the way back again so i think it is about creating those new juxtapositions that will enable us to do a lot of stuff virtually and then really home in on the really important physical and um you know the, the real uh, transaction that we can have and have that as being something completely seamless in a way that we've talked about for years i think it's mm -hmm not only going to happen it is happening um i just think there's you know the the whole field of design is it's really kind of um evolving into something that is not less pure but much more integrated and much more collaborative and much more able to connect into new things um you know albeit you know it's important to have craft it's important to learn a skill you've got to be doing that with a view to the context in which design is needed, which is incredibly complex. So mm. being able to collaborate with people who have different opinions and skills and backgrounds is, is almost as important as having a craft, I'd say. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> and um, again, as part of these changing times, uh, obviously there's more of a discussion on diversity. I know that's something that drives you on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. Um, so in what ways can design as both an industry and also as a, as a practice um, improve, upon in, improve upon catering to as many people as possible in yeah. this day and age? So some of it goes down to the practice. Um, some of it goes down to the methodology, you know, how inclusive the, the insights are and the research. And, but a lot of it really has to start with the practitioners themselves so who is actually practicing design and i think we've got a long way to go still um and that is a longer term solution that we need obviously but being able to reduce uh, decrease the barriers to entry so make it easier for people to enter the design industry so you know rethinking really what it takes for someone to become a designer such that it's it's not only is it easier to enter, but it's something that people even think about wanting to do um, that are from different backgrounds, that are from different socioeconomic backgrounds, that have different mindsets. I think we're still very narrow in terms of our, you know, our cohort. And I think we've got to address that. I think we need to look at ourselves. I mean, it couldn't be a more um, apt moment for us to be talking about this. We've got to look at ourselves. We've got to question ourselves. We've got to get educated. We, it's not good enough to just say, oh, we're really liberal, or we're really progressive. We're not. If we look around us and all we see is white faces, we're not. We're doing something wrong. Um, and we've got to work. We've got to find out what it is that we need to do. And we've got to actually do it as opposed to just pay lip service to it, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think we've got to start now. I don't yeah. think we're anywhere near where we need to be. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that um, we'll probably soon see a second digital renaissance. So I'm wondering what would be your advice for the next generation of designers? Um, what would be my advice? I think I've said it a little bit, but I'm going to say it again. I think you've got to be much more, you've got to go in with a mindset of collision and collaboration and what can you do? So what? not going there thinking that designing something perfect is the answer, designing something that can be built upon can be improved can have can be enhanced by another person's thought or another kind of technology or some other input it's being able to, to be open to that um, i think we mustn't just go into our little lines of design craft and then think that that's the answer it's definitely not going to be the answer going forward it's got to be about how we connect and sometimes that means connecting with people who 
you wouldn't necessarily choose to hang out with. They're people who have a completely different view of the world or they're really focused on something completely different, but it's quite often those two, that collision of those two things that make something much more powerful mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, one last question which you inspired um, earlier you mentioned your parents so I'm wondering do you think yeah. the next generation should start preparing uh, you know tools for the older generation to get to grips with Ooh. they should start thinking more about the older generation and how they interact yeah. with digital design I think so I think it's going to be interesting to even think about generations actually uh, I mean my, my parents uh, are of a probably dying generation I hate to say dying one of my parents but that I think what you're starting to see is the, the kind of diffusion of generations in a way, particularly around mm. things like technology and, and digital in particular has accelerated that. There's this, you know, with, with longevity, you know, people like me, I'm going to be around for a long time and I'm really tech savvy. So compared to obviously previous generations, maybe I'm not as much tech savvy as my children, but there's going to come a time when we're not divided by that. We might have completely, you know, there might be other things that divide us, but I think technology and being able to to navigate that will become the norm for older people. So actually a huge opportunity for organisations because you'll have a huge swathe of generation with, of generations that that can use technology and banking and all these things would be norm. Health, I mean that was the other one, health. Being able to do yeah. you know, telehealth is just that's it. It's gone from being something over here to just being the norm in two months' time. I mean, that's, imagine where it's going to go next. Yeah, yeah. It's quite the sky's the, yeah. yeah, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Well, those are the end of my questions. So thanks, Abby. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Definitely a lot of food for thought. So yeah, great stuff. Thank you.